Joining me right now is the newly crowned Adam Waite champion of XFC, Kayla Banny. How are you doing, Kayla? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you doing? Fine. Um, how are you feeling? You're the, you know, you're the new champ. You made history. You're the first Adam Waite champion of XFC. Yeah. Oh, I feel amazing. It feels so, yeah, it feels really surreal and really like, I can't believe it's actually happened. Yeah. <laughs> when you went back home, how did everybody receive you when you were carrying the belt? You know, like you have a big belt now. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty, yeah. Everyone was very, very proud. Very, yeah. It was a, it was a great experience. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> now what I want to do is I want to go back before the fight. Um, you actually, when you signed this bout agreement, you guys were just on the main card as one of the fights, one of the title fights. Then, you know, injuries happen. And then a couple of days before the event, you were bumped up to the main event slot, which is another first in Australia, right? Or for the promotion. Um, how did you feel? What were the emotions like when you found out like, oh, I'm the headliner now? <laughs> yeah, it was a big shock. It was like, oh my God, like um, it was, yeah, I didn't even know. I didn't even know how to sort of feel. I think the, the biggest thing was, yeah, because it was like the first time for XFC. And so it was like I, I wanted to really put on a show for them. You know, I was really like we want to, um, yeah, we want to really like, you know, put on a good show for them and um, do them proud and show them like what our skills can bring. Going into this fight against Brooke Kenrick, what was the game plan? Um, the game plan for this was um, to really feel her out the first round and take it slow because we knew that she's a very aggressive fighter. We know she comes out and gives it all. You know, we know she just charges and goes forward. So um, the game plan was to, yeah, like really sort of feel it out for the first round and, and take my time and, and not get carried away, not overcommit and expose myself. I just wanted to go in there with like, being able to think clearly, you know, like, you know, you go into some fights and you just, everything goes out the window and you just go for it. That fight was the game plan was to, you know, take the time, think clearly, circle because I knew she was going to charge um, and, and feel her out. Yeah. After, you know, a few rounds and a couple exchanges on the feed and on the ground, what surprised you about uh, Brooke? Um, what surprised me actually was how, she actually seemed to be a lot more hesitant than I had seen in her other fights. She actually didn't sort of do what we expected. She did do us like, you know, a lot of things we expected with the, um, like for example, you know, her, her guillotine, she jumped guillotine in the third round. We were expecting that. Um, but a lot of the time, yeah, like we were expecting her to just be, you know, straight on. But when she came out, she actually sort of started on the back foot, which I wasn't expecting at all. Yeah. Those guillotines, how close were they to, you know? Yeah, um, I think, yeah, it was more of it was just more, I think it was a crank rather than a choke. So I knew I could survive. And also because it was so close to the end of the round, I knew I was like, all right, I just got, I heard, you know, the 10 seconds and I was like, no, nah, there's no way. I was like, I'm going to be okay. I'm definitely going to be okay with this one. Um, but I can tell you now, my neck was sore. <laughs> I definitely had a sore neck after that. Um, but yeah, it was frustrating because as well, I knew it was coming and I could hear her corner and I knew she was going to jump for it. Um, but yeah, she's really good at it. And um, uh, I'm just, yeah, luckily that I didn't, yeah, I lasted the round with that one. For sure. Now, during the fight, what adjustments did you make that you believe won you this fight? Um, I think, like I was saying before, is I really... I took my time and I was being careful. I was, yeah, I was picking my shots. I think because I had such a clear head going into that fight that I could concentrate that bit more. I didn't have that sort of like tunnel vision where it was like, you know, I'm just going to go for it and go all out. I think as well, because now this is, you know, now I've had so many fights as well, the, the more you fight, the easier it gets. So I think for me, being able to have that clear thinking and being able to pick my shots and having my timing and reaction and just being like calm with the whole situation really helped me this fight. At the end of the fight, did you feel like you were going to get the decision from the judges? Yes. Yeah, I knew. I knew that I won every round. I knew probably by like the third round, I knew I was definitely up. I knew I was winning every round. When 
when you first started training, how old were you? And what did you train in the beginning? So when I first started training, I was seven, about seven years old. Um, my dad got me into it just for more of like a, a self-defense. So when I first started, it was nothing. It wasn't like MMA. You know, the, the whole MMA scene hadn't even sort of grown by then. Mm. It was sort of, it was more like a karate, like a freestyle kids self-defense kind of thing. And then we progressed into more like the MMA. Um, and then I just started training like all the style, styles separately as well. So I was doing, you know, Muay Thai. Then I started doing jujitsu. I did jujitsu probably a little bit later than the others. Um, started doing Muay Thai, jujitsu, and then it just sort of stemmed from, from there. Yeah. You had your first fight when you were 13. You turned pro when you were 15. Uh, talk about that night when you turned pro. Yeah, um, so that night, yeah, it was um, Fight World Cup and um, it was a bit of a shock. I saw sort of like, it, it was a weird way that it, it came about. It was on the card and it was like, oh, yeah, it was sort of on the, on the pro card. And I looked at my coach and I was like, what's going on here? Like, what, why am I on the pro card, you know? And um, it's just because as well, it was at that time where, especially for girls, it wasn't a big thing, you know? That was like, we're talking a couple of years ago, like, you know, MMA has grown so much in such a short amount of time. And a couple of years ago, like it wasn't as big. And, you know, so it was like, I just sort of took what, whatever I could get. I just wanted to fight. And, you know, and if it was meaning being on the pro card, then, then that was it. It wasn't like I had room to have all these amateur fights and get experience because it just wasn't, it wasn't there. It wasn't the case. There was no one to fight. So yeah, that's sort of how it came about. <laughs> You started fighting, like, you, like I said earlier, when you were 13. Now you're 20. You're a champion, which is, like you said, surreal. Um, yeah. During that time, those years that you were training, did you feel like you were missing out on something at, when you were growing up? Most definitely, yeah. Um, I definitely didn't have the childhood that all my friends had, that's for sure um it was funny even after this last fight one of my best friends made that comment she said like you know all those you know nights out that you traded for training you know all the parties I missed all that kind of stuff she said you know it paid off in the end and which is true you know all through school like I was you know especially through high school I was fight training constantly so it would be like you know in the morning I'd be waking up you know at like five in the morning I'd go to the gym I would train then it'd be school I would do all my assignments on my lunch break because I just didn't have time after school because I'd be training, you know, till 8.30 at night. So I definitely missed out on the things that, you know, other kids would have. I didn't, you know, I lost a lot of friends, that kind of thing. Um, but in the end, it's all worth it, you know, because that's what I wanted to do. And I knew that was the lifestyle I was going down and the road I was taking. I didn't, you know that sometimes I would miss it and it was really hard sometimes it was like you know I wish I could just have that you know like go out on the weekend friends and that kind of thing and sometimes it would get to me but it's these moments and you know that make it all worth it and it was like I wouldn't trade it for anything else like it doesn't matter how much I missed out on it's like you know now I've got the lifestyle that I wanted to set up from the start and this is what I always wanted to do so yeah in the end it's like I couldn't have you know couldn't have changed anything that I did like I, I love my life yeah well I guess you know who your real friends are if they stuck by you through that whole time and they're telling you to come on out and, you know and you're like no I gotta you know go trade I got bigger goals in my life right yeah exactly that's it and then you know they understand like you know yeah you know I've always still got them like I still talk to them to this day but it's still like they know they know like oh Kayla's not gonna come you know, Kayla's not going to come to this event because she's training. And, and that's, yeah, that's exactly how you know your true friends are. <laughs> well, when you look back at it, you know, these years that you went through training and, you know, up to this point, what, ha what do you see in yourself that's different? Because, that, because you spent so much time in the gym as a person, though. Yeah, um, I think that's a really hard question because it's a lot, you know, it's everything like my mindset and my attitude towards everything towards life like it's you know I had to it wasn't like I was you know I had to set with everything with health with fitness like it's just the whole you know for me like I always go by the motto you know to not accept mediocrity you know I don't just want to be like the average person you know I don't just want to 
I don't want to settle for less. So for me, the biggest change is, is that is the discipline as well, you know, the discipline being able, you know, like, you know, training, eating well, all that kind of stuff. Like it's and the, the way I look at things, you know, and I don't take anything for granted. It's like you got to work hard to get to where you want to be. And that's, yeah, I think the biggest thing. Now you are the XFC Animate Champion. Um, what is the future for you? Well, um, yeah, I can't wait to see what the future brings now. Um, I guess for me, so obviously um, I want to try and, you know, defend my title. Um, and so we're just gonna, it's going to be hard now to try and um, find someone else to, you know, to fight against, um, especially with, you know, being our weight, being Adam weight. It's going to be, you know, difficult to try and find another match. Um, but we're just going to have to wait and see. The, there's so much, you know, so much to, like, look forward to now. Um, I'm obviously looking at, you know, bigger shows and bigger promotions as well after, you know, like, you know, defend the title. I might look at, you know, things like Invicta, um, stuff over in America as well because, you know, that's where a lot of people my weight are and they have those divisions on shows over there. So um, that's definitely on the cards. Um, and, yeah, keep training, keep progressing, and now I'll just look forward to the next fight. All right. If you could give a message to the young girls out there, right, that are 14, 13, 15, training jujitsu, kickboxing, or maybe even MMA, what, what message would you give to them to encourage them to kind of continue going? Don't give up because, hey, look at me. I'm 20 and I'm a champion. <laughs> yeah, um, I guess. Um, yeah, I'd definitely say that, that, you know, at times when it seems tough and it seems like, you know, you're all like that it's so much easier just to slip away and just to, you know, do what everyone else is doing that in the end, it's so much more rewarding when you put in the hard yards and, you know, and you come out at the end of the tunnel and you've got that success. And, and especially at such a young age, you know, like to do something that successful being so young, it's even more rewarding than when you're like 30 years old. You know what I mean? It's like, you've got your whole life ahead of you. Um, and it's just to um, train that dedication and that discipline when you're young. You're not training and with you, you know, your jiu-jitsu or your Muay Thai, but with your lifestyle in general, you know, with being an adult, with everything, it, it sort of helps you mature a lot earlier, you know, because you, you're, you're that, you've got that discipline and that dedication that you're so mature at such a young age. And it's just, yeah, and then, you know, it opens up so much more opportunities where you're like, yeah, now I'm 20 and, yeah, I've got an XFC, you know, I'm the Adam Weight champion and, so now it's like I got all these years, I got all this room to grow. I've got so much more to achieve now. And it's yeah, at such a young age, it's amazing. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Kayla, for your time. I know that you are busy enjoying your rewards, <laughs> right? So uh definitely I will speak to you in the future and I'm thinking that you will, you know, defend your title really soon. So before then, I'll speak to you again. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that.